Okay, third time's a charm. This is my third take on this video. It's gonna be my last. Imperfections is gonna be warts and all. Anyway, uh, welcome, a warm, hearty Capital Rev welcome to all of you people who are uh, joining us here on Capital Rev, especially those people who recently subscribed. No doubt you subscribed because of the uh, Jordan Peterson videos, or a lot of you did, uh, not because of all of this, I understand. Um, so what I wanted to do in this video, actually was to talk a little bit, originally it was gonna be about uh, the four things that I learned uh, from Jordan Peterson as an investor when I met him back in 2011, 2012. Um, not that Peterson's a great investor, but his insights I think are universal. But because things are going on uh, in real estate that are really, really interesting to me and hopefully interesting to you, uh, the real estate uh, video has jumped to the queue and so stay tuned for Peterson next time. I wanna talk very briefly about what's going on in real estate, particularly what's going on in Toronto real estate where I happen to be located at the moment. A um, Couple things, one, just anecdotally, I've got some friends, clients, we call them friends. I know some people who work in real estate in Toronto and what they have stated um, as a group independently is that the market, uh, the Toronto real estate market has been split asunder as it were. Whereas before uh, there, there was a lot of activity in the million to $2 million property range, it's been split asunder in the following way in that the uh, high end market, the sort of $2 million plus properties, they continue to sell at the rate that they've always sold at. Um, but those people who would have uh, before in 2017 and before gone for the million, million and a half, up to $2 million property, those people can't afford those things anymore because it's stress test, so they're moving down market. So we have basically a dumbbelling of uh, the Toronto real estate market. And speaking of the Toronto real estate market, UBS just came out with a piece on a uh, global real estate analysis, uh, rate, rating different cities around the world for their risk of being in bubble territory. And guess which city tops that list? That's right, I'm living in it. Um, so I'll leave the link to the UBS report. It's a very short report relative to the other UBS reports. These guys are not um, a little taciturn or they're long-winded. But this one's a relatively quick uh, read, and I think anyone who's interested in real estate or a potential buyer of real estate or whatever, I think would be I think it'd be a worthwhile read. Uh, Toronto tops the list of the bubblicious territories in the world, which is a thing if you are planning on buying real estate. Now there's a real there's a there's a there's a lifestyle advantage to real estate, obviously, but if you're buying it as a replacement for some kind of investment portfolio, I don't think that's wise. And I think if you read the UBS report with an open mind, you'll come to that conclusion as well. So that about does it, wraps her all up in this third take on this video. I don't like doing more than three takes, so this is what you're gonna get, like it or not. Uh, next video, I'm gonna be talking about the insights that I gleaned uh, from having dinner with Peterson a couple of times and then going to his house and filming him, talking about various things from Pinocchio to put options. Um, and the time after that, I think because of this, I'm also, for my stock investors, and the stock newsletter is growing very, growing very nicely, so I'm flattered by that, thanks to you people who are joining that. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the stock market as well, so it's, it's not like the only risk that Canadians face at the moment is related to real estate. Uh, because now is a particularly risky time in stocks as well, um, for a variety of reasons. Basically, the, the um, uh, there's been the largest treasury auction in history yesterday, uh, that's a thing. Uh, rates, generally speaking, are rising. The Bank of Japan has uh, been, you know, has removed itself from being as stimulative as it has been in the past. And so that means that every, the three big central banks in the world, the ECB, the States, and Japan, are uh, moving to a slightly more hawkish stance, which is gonna make rates rise globally. That's gonna affect risk assets of all kinds. Uh, there's ways to make money in that, uh, I think, but you should, um, be aware of what's going on because it's actually kind of a spicy meatball. But we'll get into that in the next video. I hope you stay tuned for that. I hope you are looking forward to watching that as much as I'm looking forward to delivering the content unto you. As usual, thank you very much for watching. It has been a pleasure. My name is Patrick Doyle. Bye. Birds come and cry there and twitter.